so basically when we talk about sourcing right we are talking about when we how we procure or how we get those materials raw materials components from our vendors right so then uh, when you talk about again analytics so any kind of huge case of analytics is ideally to optimize the process right to reduce cost right so that is somewhere we will be focusing on there are again different parts of sourcing analytics what you want to optimize you want to optimize suppliers that means rather than having 100 suppliers do you want to reduce it to 10 or 15 suppliers because managing 100 suppliers are difficult how to do go about it or do you want to kind of reduce the number of transactions frequency of transactions right how many times actually you are buying components right or do you want to optimize or minimize the number of purchase orders right earlier what used to happen when erp system was not implemented right what will happen every time a somebody a company requires something there will be a purchase order manual purchase order it will be posted then the vendor will receive it then they will supply right which is a time taking process now due to erp implementation right so where we can talk about at least in certain industries certain sectors like automobile we can think of just in time implementation right so maruti tomorrow morning in the ship they need 5000 components rather than storing in their manser plant or the inventory they can in the erp system automated order will be set so whichever is the component supplier by morning 6 am or 5:30 or 5 pm the truck will move from their plant and uh, kind of uh, just in time deliver in the maruti's manser plant right so that is where they are saving a lot on inventory cost right so those are the like kind of ways to optimize basically we are trying to minimize the cost right so sourcing and procurement analytics which is today's discussion right i hope all of you are clear on the top line and bottom line top line is the revenue part how much money a company is earning bottom line is the how much is going in your cost and am i able to optimize or minimize that right basically bottom line is the profit after cost and all the things going how much profit i am earning right so whenever we are talking about supply chain or whenever we are talking about the analytics part there are obviously two ways to do it either i will increase my revenue right is there any way i can increase my revenue which is basically the top priority for sales and marketing guys right so their main focus is to gain market share increase revenue right but as a supply chain operational uh, professional can we contribute to that is there any way where we can improve the revenue improve sales right so how we can do that because if you can bring the products faster to market right because we are coordinating with our suppliers we if we build those relationship build the network we can launch our products faster than our competitors so that additional revenue will come from that right because rather than let's say a maruti or iphone or whichever product you can think of rather than launching 6 months down the line or 9 months down the line if you can reduce that time by 1 month or 2 months so that additional 1 months or 2 months revenue we are getting right so that is the first to market improved quality right because the more the premium product people will buy if your quality is good even today when nokia do not exist in that form still people talk about nokia's phone's quality right your quality of the product improves your margin and later on improves your revenue also improves your market share also right pricing flexibility because if i am providing good quality i can charge more also right i can charge a premium also then obviously the innovation part right if i am able to some technology partner i am able to well, let's say right now a lot of discussions are happening on electric vehicles if one automobile manufacturer was the first one to have a partnership with let's say tesla or somebody from us who have a better technology right so in india they will be the market leader right at least for some time before others catch up right so that is where your supply chain at least on the sourcing part they can contribute to the top line or the revenue part 
similarly then what about your uh, profit or the bottom line from bottom line basically you can improve if you can reduce the cost so there are many ways to reduce the cost how acquisition cost how much money you pay to acquire those cost of goods sold right the raw material components processing cost during your production during your manufacturing during, during your assembly during storing in your warehouse is there a way to reduce that optimize that quality cost quality control is a big cost right because i need to check continuously for any problem with my components product right can i reduce that downtime cost product uh, assembly line fail production plant uh, there is a shutdown there is a downtime downtime is the time plant is not in is in operation right assembly line is not working due to that can happen due to machine failure or uh, your resources are not there right the risk cost that is a big thing because if you are uh, bringing sub quality material sub quality component your products won't work your products won't go to the market and it will fail lot of automobile manufacturers have that issue sometimes to save cost they tie up with uh, vendors who promise them a good quality product but they are not able to supply how to reduce that then obviously cycle time same how quickly i am able to process the products components conversion cost so like let's say there is certain changes in component or changes in raw material am i able to change the cost there non value added cost uh, that is somewhere your value chain analysis work right uh, some of you who are taken managing service and uh, service operations right we did that value stream analysis in assembly line whenever we are assembling certain items products or components though we did it for a hospital right same thing can be applied in a, your uh, assembly line also right what are value added activities what are non value added activities right non value added activities are basically cost to me it is just the waiting time if i am able to reduce that i am will be able to produce more right then overall supply chain logistics cost then post ownership cost right once i prepare once i kind of um, produce or assemble a product ideally it should go to the customer i it should not be with me if i am storing it my warehouse is storing in my plant that is a post ownership cost right so there are many ways to reduce cost and there are few ways to improve at least the sales or revenue right so supply chain or at least the this sourcing analytics can help both in increase in your top line that is revenue increase in your bottom line that is profit right so this is where the if you look into the left side of the screen uh there are many ways where you are kind of uh there are many applications which will, which will be running so here basically we are looking for a mid size or a kind of at least uh, um, those companies who have implemented certain e procurement or at least uh, they have a erp system right uh, we are not looking into those small companies who still do not have those kind of tools or those kind of applications right so there are many kind of uh, software tools applications running at any given point of time right so ordering will be done being done through a platform e procurement uh, softwares so there are different software different platforms through which e procurement happens right i hope all of you understand e procurement right so the tendering manual tendering part converted in the like kind of online system so rf queues online rf queues also then you have a sap system mostly which is the erp system right then there will be a certain financial system uh, maybe oracle or maybe through sap will be controlling the finance part right so basically if you remember what we discussed so when we were talking of supply chain there are flow of three things right material information and finance right and all these applications are related to that either information is being going from one agency one company to other or finances money is being transferred or the actual material product or components or raw material being transferred then in the process system 
process is basically how you manage something right which framework you use right so there will be something to manage your spend right uh, just to give a typical example there will be different hierarchy levels right up to this much amount spend will be approved by uh, senior manager or a chief manager from 50 lakhs to 5 crore by director right so that is how your spend is being managed in a company then sourcing management which is basically a procurement uh, officer or a purchase officer will be doing right how you manage your sources how you manage your vendors uh, selecting the next is supplier selection so there will be rules regulations processes so it is not that okay you want to let's say you are a, uh, like after mba you started a, a management consulting firm you will go to a state uh, odisha government and say that uh, i'll participate in your tender right First, you have to register yourself in the government of Odisha's uh, vendor, as a government of Odisha's vendor. That itself has to go through a lot of processes. Any company, even for kit, somebody wants to supply laptops, somebody wants to supply mouses or these webcams, they need to register themselves as a vendor uh, for kit, right? So, there is a process for selecting supplier. Any, any company will have a there are specific processes checklist to select or register vendors then contract management how you are managing those purchase orders tenders through manual processes or through e procurement if e procurement what are the templates what are the processes right then relational management right so like you have a customer relationship management right for all the big companies they will have a supplier relationship management because like customers are important for the sales and marketing team Sub suppliers are very important for your procurement team right because if you're able to build that network build that partnership right you'll be able to save a lot of cost right while sales and marketing are looking for revenue from customers you are looking for a strategic partnership with your suppliers to reduce cost right so similarly like crm there will be srm right supplier relationship management database where you will have all the information about suppliers any new supplier comes to register with you you will get the details they will go through the process they will get registered then you will have different tier of suppliers uh, suppliers right like in your customers there will be few customers which are premium customers right because they have been 10 years within your company and they like for tcs tcs i, I think i was giving that example right there are 100 or uh, 120 customers who basically pay TCS one crore per day. That means on an average, they have a 350 crore plus business with TCS per year. So they for, so those 120, 100 customers are very important for TCS because from each customer on an average, they're getting 300 crore revenue, which is a big amount. 40 million or 30, uh, sorry, 50 million dollars, right? So similarly, your uh, there will be suppliers will be big supplier for you. Like I'll show you a list of suppliers for Maruti. Some suppliers will be uh, very big company on their own. Like uh, think about your Apple or think about your um, this Android phone, Samsung, right? So there will be some big suppliers like Sony who might be supplying the camera lenses for them, right? So there will be typically different types of suppliers for you also, right? How you manage relationships with them. Then what kind of data you have, right? You might have spent data each supplier wise, each product wise, each region wise. That is something which we'll discuss during spend queue. What kind of data you have, right? Then sourcing data from where you are bringing those components, raw material. Supplier data, obviously the supplier information. Contract data, the purchase order data. Then relational data, the contact information and all those things. And these informations all might not be in a single place. They might be different platforms, different uh, softwares. You might be storing that data, different databases where you are storing that data, right? Then now comes the analytics layer using this kind of information what kind of analysis you can carry out right analytics doesn't mean you need to have always have a 
high end software right you can do the same thing unless it is a something a optimization or prospective analytics right all these descriptive diagnostics predictive can be done even with a excel file also right if you know all the functions all the tools in excel all these things can be clearly done except the prescriptive part uh, again in excel also there are optimization tools but they are not uh, they cannot take uh, uh, they are easily limitations of uh, how many data points they can cover right otherwise other three things easily can be done in in your excel right so this is where your different type of uh, applications are related to processes based on processes you have different type of data collection you have different kind of databases from databases you collect data collect information and you depending upon requirement you carry out those analysis can any questions or any doubt on this then uh, what are the different types so same thing what we are discussing in the last uh, slide you can analyze your suppliers right making bet better decisions on suppliers for strategic product categories for certain product categories who should be our potential or ideal or preferred supplier assessing new suppliers for existing product categories which is a big task for procurement managers right because every now and then new suppliers will come and try to register with you right on what basis you access them right on what basis you say that okay this might be a potentially good supplier right predicting supplier attributes on this right for a big company like let's say g healthcare or let's say itc or hcl there might be 500 or 1000 suppliers or much more than that right so how you how you make sure that uh, or which like in your company we do a employee attribution analysis here we are looking for supplier attribution analysis which supplier is prone to leave right then you should have a backup right or at least you should discuss with them with them to understand why they are like kind of trying to leave your company right then providing insight on fraud detection framework and predictions among supplier right and that is something again tricky uh, you some suppliers might play foul uh, every now and then uh some components uh, some like bad batch of uh, components or raw material they will be sending along with good batch of raw material how you can detect that and it happens a lot because if you are a like kind of a big value supplier you are sending so many items so many components in between you can um, do some fraud fraudulent activities and send some corrupted uh, raw material or uh, defective components right how as a company will be able to protect your company from this kind of frauds right lot of a uh, lot of these kind of challenges happen right uh, so they might and uh, it is a big issue in oil and refining companies right so what they'll do they'll like uh, not uh, dispatch those quantity and they might have a tie up with those uh, gatekeepers when i say gatekeepers actual gatekeepers on the uh, warehouses and they will sign those challenges right truck drivers and trailers they will sign those challenges and uh, because see like the quantity is huge uh, but the amount of uh, material you will be procuring will be in like uh, also you for itc it will be in lakhs of tons right so somebody rather than supplying 500 tons they will supply 450 tons and 50 tons they have already sold in between to your plant but uh, they have taken that challenge that yes i have supplied 500 tons right so these are very like kind of uh, small small kind of uh, issues small small frauds but when you add them up they will become very big right so how how you take care of that then category analysis understanding suppliers raw material requirement each supplier wise how much raw material you are preparing right and uh, how much has been the increase in past few years facilitating what if scenario analysis that again this is a big task right if this happens what will happen right if there is a change in cost 
change in quantity what will happen to those kind of purchase orders then contract analysis is basically your purchase orders right so every purchase order will have certain cost lead time and quantity how on a matrix if i put out of 1000 purchase orders this year how many of them made the cost parameter how many of them made the lead time parameter that means if they are supposed to supply within one week two week or three week how many of them could not meet the criteria how many of them could not meet the quantity because it is not necessary that you have ordered something suppliers might not have those quantity available right so they might not able to meet the quantity also right so you have to keep track of that generally all these things will be uh, kept track through a supply chain dashboard right improving contract management so how many contracts you should have how many sources single source or multi source that means for the same material same component should i have a single supplier or multiple vendors right then payment analysis this is again from the financial perspective right so some big companies will have a different separate department for supply chain finance right so they will be looking into accounts payable general ledger and looking into where they can save money right then other scenarios uh, then again sensitivity analysis optimizing product specific supply network uh, based on environmental factors market demand production planning raw material demand so this is again depending upon big companies like apple or let's say hyundai or samsung right this becomes challenge right whenever you are uh, operating in 100 plus countries where actually you should put to your warehouses where you actually you should put your plant right so this you cannot get from a predictive analytics or a descriptive analytics this is somewhere your optimization or simulations will help you so after this six or seven classes are over when you get into that part we'll see how to carry out those analysis right if i have these kind of options 100 of locations and i have to put two plants two warehouses where exactly i should put to minimize my cost right so if you look into maruti and this is only for one product a uh, new sujika wagner right so there are different companies mothers and Sumi you might have heard and they are a big uh, company then there are different companies who are supplying different kind of components to for this particular product right and they might be supplying for other like uh, continental might be uh, giving for other uh, models of maruti right and these are the limited list of main suppliers right and then how do you categorize those suppliers right so if let's say maruti is here automotive manufacturer maruti hyundai honda right and it can be applied for any any uh, manufacturing or assembly company not only for automobiles those suppliers who give a complete module like the honda maruti is taking uh, engines from let's say i don't know whether they have mentioned engines here no let's say maruti is taking okay we'll take whichever example is given this uh, floor console or let's say your uh, hydraulic system hydraulic system is given by magneti marelli right so there is a company which is providing this a hydraulic system so those suppliers who are providing you a complete system complete module somebody is providing that ignition system somebody is providing a chassis somebody is providing your hydraulic system right somebody is providing that braking system right so these are the tire one supplier right so they are providing complete module somebody if they are uh, importing the engines if honda is supplying the engines then that is a complete system or a module then there will be somebody who will be supplying the components right so components they might be supplying to the see when honda is building those engines or this magnet marily is building hydraulic system so it is not system is nothing but some combination of uh, components right think about your laptop right for laptop uh, if i take this is which one lenovo laptop right for lenovo they will be purchasing this processor uh, your uh, this uh, screen 
this camera keypad from different vendors so each of them has small small systems or modules right then those system vendors let's say intel is providing the processor but processor they'll be bringing raw material from some other vendor right so they become your component supplier right then those companies who are supplying raw material to the component vendors they become tier 3 suppliers or element suppliers for maruti let's say your uh, hydraulic system or let's say this uh, floor system is being given by mother sansumi systems so those suppliers who are supplying to mother sansumi they will become tier 2 supplier for maruti and those suppliers who are supplying to tier 2 supplier they will become tier 3 supplier then why you are keeping this in mind because any problem happens in tier 3 tier 2 is going ultimately going to impact you also right just like this happened uh, your uh, recently there was a problem with i think silicon uh, those uh, mining right which has a huge uh, problem with transistors which impacted your processors which impacted your laptop manufacturer even the tata motors uh, jaguar and land rover uh, those vehicles were also production were delayed so see at what level you have to look into if you have a company like tata motors who is looking into la- uh, land rover and jaguar so they are not looking into the supply chain only for those companies who are providing you the systems modules you have to look for their suppliers also right you should have a, so i'm not telling you should have a tie up or you should have a purchase order with them not necessarily but you should have a visibility of what they are doing is there any trouble because then only you can manage the risk right because right now what happens there will be always a ripple effect one problem happens certain company that will impact your next businesses right like this in this case your problem with mining silicon and all those raw material was not available gave a problem to transistors that is tier 2 problem with transistors gave a problem to the module processors those processors which has required for those automated vehicles because the systems modules or processors were not given to land rover and jaguar there was a production delay of those vehicles say so our prices came down right so all these things are linked right any any questions on this come back to it is right see like uh, how much quantity they are procuring right so if you look into the right side part of it, this screen uh let's say cigarettes right so these numbers are nothing but tonnages right how much tonnages of that quantity they are procuring right hello is that a question so from raw material they are bringing this much like let's say green leaves the tobacco leaves 125483 tonnages filters 4 lakh so the total weight of filters is 4 lakh 5309 sorry 39 right so out of that where it is going to the cigarette business and what is the final production how much tonnages of quantity being produced same thing if i come to the food from agri products that is around 16 lakh 68069 tonnages of material they are procuring some part of it is going to the foods business and at the finally this is the quantity they are producing in itc right again if you see from itc itc is supplying 428 to industrial suppliers exporters 346099 tons of quantity so for the fmcg think about asirva data no tools all those things right combined how much they are sending to the market 3 lakhs 46099 tonnages of material being sent to the market same thing if you combine all this 244864 is coming from the agri products raw material is 104300 right this combined will give to this numbers right so you saw, uh, see the uh, magnitude of quantity as a business they are covering the amount of quantity the 
uh, tonnages they are handling right for different businesses and that again being distributed across their the retailers and distributors right and how how they are managing it right so leaf business again like uh, that is for the cigarette businesses then they have a separate packaging businesses which is basically the paper and packaging business together they are taking care of then personal care products foods agri business matches and agarbatis that also is a separate uh, separate uh, a kind of uh, area separate uh, business they are looking into right so to understand that okay if you will work in if in case some of you get into it or any any particular domain uh, is there a question Uh, if if uh, there is a particular like kind of domain or a particular area you are working with, look into the overall magnitude of uh, dealers, distributors. Uh, they are look working with in the sales side, and the magnitude of raw material vendor they are working with. Here, if you see, it is only look uh, written as agri products, but for that they might be working with the ten thousands of farmers, right? Similarly, here with also when they are producing cigarettes, right? The green leaves which they are procuring, there might be so many farmers they are working with, right? So the magnitude becomes huge in kind of these kind of big big companies, right? Uh, this is again basically what kind of dashboard you need to create. Uh, either like if you are a like kind of a big company, you might have a SAP system. Oracle system or maybe Tableau Power BI, which will be helping you to maintain your dashboard. Smaller companies do keep maintaining through Excel dashboards, right? But you have to maintain those lists, right? Somebody will like just ask you, how many orders have been delayed last month? Uh, what were the total uh, quantity of procurement, right? All those information should be there, available for the management in your dashboards. Anybody knows the difference between these four? Anyone? What do you mean by outsourcing, offsourcing, nearsourcing, onsourcing? At least you should know what do you mean by outsourcing, right? You might have heard this word. Sir, outsourcing is uh, uh, like uh, giving our, our uh, uh, in-house job to another third party is uh, out, outsourcing. And if uh, offshoring means uh, like when a company uh, sends to uh, in-house jobs to perform in another uh, country. Okay, outsourcing also mostly in another country, right? Yes, sir. Then what is the difference between outsourcing and offshoring? Sir, outsourcing can be any company, uh, like uh, in the same company or the other company, but uh, offshoring are uh, mostly the uh, dealing with other country countries. So think about any in this example which we have just discussed. Let's say Maruti want to venture out. They want to venture out to let's say Europe or the USA. They want to build their own manufacturing plant, right? So. That will that be outsourcing or offshoring or nearshoring or onshoring? Offshoring. Okay. So can't they outsource it? Sir, as for your example, I, I I think it will be offshoring, but uh, I'm not sure about outsourcing here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you are correct on the definition side. Outsourcing is basically 
when you talk about third party vendors right uh, if i'm giving some of my work uh, it can be production work it can be process work sometimes uh, part of the hr work human resources work being outsourced sometimes the it work itself in a company being outsourced sometimes maintenance work might be outsourced right so all these things again are just supplier manager or a procurement manager you might have to handle right but whenever i am appointing a third party vendor right so that is a different company whom i am appointing to take care of that so that is outsource right then what do you mean by offsourcing offsourcing is when your you build your own plant you build your own office so most of the mnc's if you think uh, general g or uh, google apple uh, and this essenture us based all the us deloitte us based companies right so they have offices in india also india mexico all these uh, locations right so that is basically offsourcing because they have their own offices there so if you are working in deloitte india you are still employee right of that company right so due to uh, taxation and all those things they create uh, those uh, different company names but still you are a part of the parent company right so you are still employee of that company right but in outsource what happens that is a different company uh, essential or ibm will outsource some part of work to tcs or infosys right so that is where outsourcing work then hello uh then what do you mean by near source near sourcing near sourcing actually there are uh, these all three are related offsourcing near sourcing and non sourcing offsourcing when let's say usa company is giving uh building their offices in bangalore right so that becomes a example of offsourcing near sourcing if usa builds a office in mexico because they are sharing the border right sharing their kind of uh, us and mexico or let's say india bangladesh if uh, infosys in india uh, builds a new office in bangladesh that will become their near sourcing right when they share a border right on sourcing is basically due to cost concerns right now if you see all those twin cities are coming up uh, in, uh your uh, basically mumbai pune started similarly in your uh, bangalore your uh, mysore started right so near the city whenever your main offices are there some part of your work or some part of your employee you send it to nearby city right to reduce cost right so in onsourcing your offices are within your national border right might be in a different city low cost city right offices are being formed in bhubneswar it companies right because comparatively the kind of uh, rates are little bit up lower than let's say bangalore or mumbai right near sourcing when you are building your offices uh, your near your border right india building either in sri lanka or bangladesh that will be example right obviously i don't think they will build in pakistan similarly usa in europe uh, sorry usa in mexico in europe there are around uh, 24 25 per more than that those uh, part of european union so they can like uh, share those borders they share those borders and they can open up offices offsourcing is when one country builds in a different geography itself right best example like us companies are building their offices in uh, india thailand uh, philippines right so those are offsourcing but all these three cases right offsourcing near sourcing and non sourcing right so they are building their own offices those employees are their own employees right though they for legal purposes they build like let's say for essential it will be essential india right delert delert india ibm ibm india g healthcare india right but again still you are a part of the parent company but outsourcing is when you are sending your work to a third party a different company altogether right so that is the main difference then any questions on this
the uh, like as uh, tata is uh, uh, building the new premises in the scz areas mm. uh, that can be the onshoring example mm. correct that is in a different city within national borders right yes sir. then uh, difference between strategic sourcing and procurement actually everything started with procurement procurement means i'm purchasing something right so they used to uh, develop strategy what will be my procurement strategy uh, used to manage supplier develop supplier right some suppliers might need new technologies you have to like kind of collaborate with them give them that training all these automobile companies do that starting with toyota because automobile component manufacturers are small companies right so they do not have uh, money they do not have uh, kind of capital to invest in this erp systems uh, most of the times these companies like toyota hyundai honda they kind of develop those suppliers they put money their own money to develop those suppliers Uh, in recent time when i say recent time at least uh, last 15 20 years and this term has uh, taken a uh, like precedence over procurement because now rather than being reactive okay i need this component i this need this material now let me go and search for supplier companies are becoming proactive they are looking into future they are looking into okay in future if i am developing this platform this model which kind of suppliers shall be requiring or oh, rather than having thousand suppliers or 500 suppliers can i reduce number of suppliers so this is where the strategic part come rather than you are looking to tactical tactical means short term okay i need uh, this many components this year let me send purchase order let me select vendor send purchase order rather than doing that uh, you are looking for next 5 years or 10 years you are having that partnership with those suppliers for next 5 years or 10 years so you have a strategic partnership with them so how it helps obviously there is a reduction in cost because you are building that trust you are building that openness now you are telling me that okay you are not a different company you are a part of my company i will make sure that you are getting this kind of order every year you need not have to worry about that but you ensure that the quality is of top quality and you look for opportunities to reduce cost right so most of the companies will have a target of reducing supply chain cost year on year 3 to 5 percentage right so how will you reduce your cost one of the major uh, cost uh, to reduce the cost is you reduce your component cost if i just go and ask the uh, companies reduce your cost it won't happen so you have to work with them rather than using this kind of uh, material raw material can we switch to a, some different material which will be less uh, cost but superior quality so that is where you have to partnership with them for research and development right companies like intel samsung they do a lot of partnership with their uh, suppliers because if i just force them no if you do not reduce your cost uh, i'll not uh, buy from you obviously they will kind of uh, uh, give that cost but reduce quality also right but when uh, i am trying to maintain quality i need to work with them i need to have a supplier development plan right so that is where your strategic sourcing came into picture being little proactive being looking into future analyze spend identifying requirement what will be my future requirement analyzing market for new suppliers some new startups might come and they are providing lot of better material right uh there is a i think uh, i forgot his name uh there was, there was a guy from odisha he started this because most of the manufacturing companies are facing this issue for this component manufacturing right suddenly they need certain component which need to be customized they do not have a good vendor right for the regular components they have vendor but suddenly they need certain customization they do not have good vendor uh one guy from odisha he has uh, like kind of started that startup with those 3d kind of technology with this um, all these kind of new manufacturing technologies 
a new process is where he is taking those contracts any new kind of custom customized components you require he is taking that contract and he he is doing well his company is doing well i think around right now they i think they have a capitalization of 2 billion dollars or something like that so so this is always a need for these manufacturers right so to build prototypes to build certain things they need somebody who can take those orders and give them prototypes very quickly and in india actually that is a very big uh, kind of gap very few companies are there who can do quality work then strategic sourcing so there are different steps of strategic sourcing uh, first starting with where actually your maximum that 80 20 rule pareto rule right where actually your spend is going so there is something called spend queue i'll show you what is that so you you basically analyze your spend right so think about your home right monthly 40000 or 50000 average expenses are happening right you can look into in different ways right person wise how much spend is happening right let's say there are five members i can divide that okay each member wise how much on an average spend is happening or different things kind of different uh, categories right food grocery items clothes entertainment rent right so there are different ways to look into expenses right same thing with the company also right whenever i am buying companies are buying something it can be into your location wise how much purchases are happening product wise how much purchases are happening right geography wise how much geography in your location it will go right supplier wise how much each supplier wise on total how much purchases i am doing right so there are different ways of looking into same numbers right so that is the first thing as a strategic sourcing guy uh, somebody has to do look into your current expenses and look into different areas of expenses define sourcing category identify category characteristics process review mapping analyze review marketplace identify key cost drivers so the idea is so that 80 20 rule which is the 20 percentage of items 20 percent locations or 20 percent suppliers which are giving 80 percentage expenses right total expenses so generally that the pareto rule applies in these cases right so there will be main one or two product or one or two locations or five or 10 suppliers who are giving you total 80 percentage expenses of your company right so that is something which you need to control that is something where your optimization will happen next is develop category sourcing strategy right understand buying power right because that is something if you do not have the buying power you are a startup and you are going and getting those material so that is something you have to look into how much power you have in that situation determine category complexity maruti is purchasing so many components some components will be very complex like engine or your uh, brake assembly hydraulic assembly right some components are very simple your those uh, glasses or the mats or the leather seats right so you cannot uh, keep all the vendors in the same region right because something is very technological complex you know that you cannot develop engine in one day or two day you need certain technology for that so that is where your category complexity will come determine sourcing approaches right so whether it you are looking for a short term or long term whether you want to improve quality or uh, decrease cost whether you want to have a single sourcing guy or a multiple vendors right so those are the things you have to discuss position sourcing approaches to maximize savings effect right this is somewhere your ultimate vision or aim to basically maximize your savings optimize your cost so this is where you research additional suppliers establish supplier qualification criteria right on what basis you will identify a supplier and qualify them that they are now registered with your company right each company like i said will have different parameters based on which they select most of the government uh, companies if let's say i become tomorrow i become a contractor i will not get any government contract 
they require 5 to 7 years of prior experience of whatever 50 crore or 100 crore of contracts so similarly for a company like whichever company what will be your qualification criteria effect quantitative supplier rating right so this is where your supplier analysis comes into picture right so you have to categorize uh, kind of your suppliers like uh, your customers are categorized right so profitable customers not profitable customers premium customers right in crm system there are different methods to categorize customers for a telecom guy or for netflix they also will be categorizing customers some customers who have the premium plan some customers who are a basic plan some customers who are only looking for free things right same thing here also for the suppliers depending upon supplier category they might be in diamond gold silver again it need not be always in that diamond gold silver there are different uh, kind of terminology different companies will be using then choose the competitor collaborate right now you look into how to optimize that i have now identified suppliers define alternative strategies select best approach path basically select pre qualified suppliers so here actually you are looking into which supplier you know that there will be few suppliers with whom you cannot compete with whatever they say you have to agree upon depending upon your buying power there will be some suppliers where you have the upper hand right now you start interacting with them looking for partnership long term partnership like i said the major differences of strategic sourcing with procurement is strategic sourcing is looking for long term right not only for 6 months or 9 months care looking for next 5 to 10 years conduct uh, this is the request for quote or request for intent so rfx means x you can change for anything i q anything so rfi will be request for intent uh, rfq will be request for quote right so here basically you would develop your long term negotiation strategy negotiate conduct negotiations develop and execute agreement so long term strategic sourcing you say that okay every year we'll try to reduce cost by 3 percentage for that i'll kind of invest this much amount in your company or i'll kind of give you training on the erp system or i'll give you training on this six sigma lean sigma right so that kind of things need to be negotiated and put into that strategic sourcing document or the kind of contract document then implement obviously implementation will happen that okay for next six months or one year you will see that whether that supplier actually is able to improve perform if not then again you go back and look whether uh, your decision was correct if not you have to change that right so these are again six steps sometimes seven steps of your strategic sourcing any any questions on this So this is where your strategic suppliers come, like uh, where actually you should put your major focus, market complexity and risk, right? So basically, what is that? What kind of technology it is? In? Like I said, for Maruti, Honda, or those companies who are providing engines, they will be here, strategic suppliers, because complexity and risk is very high. Tomorrow they do not supply you the engine, do not supply you the hydraulic system, your manufacturing will stop and value of spend obviously uh, if you look into a car on an average 15 to 20 percentage or 25 percentage of the cost will be into the engine part engine assembly right so these companies will fall under strategic suppliers but market complexity is high technology is high but the value of spend is low there will be few components where risk is high complexity of technology complexity is high but value of spend is low right so they those are bottleneck suppliers right because you have to have a negotiate you have to spend time with them but value of spend is very low right total value of how much you are procuring items is very low for a let's say for these uh, laptops right uh, these uh, 
plastic assemblies right or maybe the cameras right they may might follow in that technology technically complex only maybe sony or some uh, companies are there who are producing those webcams which is integrated into your laptop right but value of the total spend if i compare laptop average laptop price is 50000 so they might be buying it for 1000 or 2000 rupees right 1 by 25 or 1 by 30th of the total laptop cost right then there will be routine suppliers right this uh, if i look into this laptop those screws plastic assembly right all these small small items low cost those are routine suppliers right so that you need not have to put a lot of focus on right that part you can automate so this is something known as tail spend right so today's class exercise which you need to submit by next class right is about the tail spend because when you were talking about strategic sourcing we are focusing on this 80 percentage and the total amount of spend is around 80 percentage from 20 percentage supplier then what about others right other 80 percentage of suppliers who are 20 percentage of your spend how to deal with them right so that is something known as tail spend analysis right so head is basically which is very important tail is the very low if i put a curve tail part is the low cost right but there are many vendors right how to manage that then there will be few suppliers right complexity risk is low right the technology is available but the value is very high right so look about the in a car look into tires right for a car there are four tires then one extra spare tire right so five tires cost right technology is not very significant there will be other tire manufacturers also right but still value wise it will be significant for your kind of uh, cost right so that is somewhere you have to leverage those suppliers right so mostly those strategic sourcing guys will be focusing on this where risk is very high technological risk market risk is very high technology will be available but it is not available in your country right right now like this um, electric uh, battery technology right whichever technology is available with us is not at par with the let's say european or usa right so that is some of the strategic sourcing guys we play a role any any questions on this so for example like i said here your engines will come for a car here your tires will come here all those wipers leather seats right so that is market risk is low and value wise also they are low then bottleneck suppliers may be certain assembly certain uh, this brake assembly uh, carburetor and all those things which might be technologically complex but value wise low right any any questions on this same thing again here it is uh, written so now like i said uh, in the second step you have to prioritize right you have to first starting working with the like low hanging fruits which is of the highest priority right so here degree the difficulty is low right you know that you'll be able to complete that task first right so that rule applies everywhere whenever you start working whichever work is simpler looks complete that first so that you know that like in your exam right uh, so that is uh, every time any competitive exam whichever questions you can solve first solve them first so that will give you other enough time to solve the difficult problems wherever savings opportunity is high right you know that uh, you can like able to negotiate and able to save that much amount and degree of difficulty low right so that should be your highest priority right lowest priority is degree of difficulty high right negotiating with that vendor will be very difficult i cannot negotiate with honda and ask them to reduce cost right and savings opportunities also might be low right so in that case it is the lowest priority i'll be looking into highest priority among those strategic suppliers right so where i can save maximum with lowest effort 
this is given for some company i think so let me address for which company for god so here trip you see savings opportunity in it hardware maintenance repair and operation activities is maximum effort is less degree of difficulty is less if i am a strategic sourcing guy i'll focus first on these things i'll try to rationalize vendor optimize vendors suppliers reduce cost here then followed by this yellow ones and never look into this thing because it will just take my effort and i will not able to save anything right because see i have 100 things to do as a strategic source i cannot do everything so the, which are the first few things i should focus on so this is a matrix this is a framework which helps me to do that and any questions up to this point is the time now so before i come to this i'll show you a spend queue okay this is something known as a enterprise spend visibility if some of you had taken this uh, business intelligence and data mining right so data is being stored in a cube structure right so there will be something called supplier dimension where supplier data is available right then commodity dimension what is the product commodity product component what is the information about that then location dimension right which country or which location let's say this this is for siemens right uh, then this is uh, or like kind of commodity dimension or uh, sourceable commodity buckets different uh, commodity is basically you can think of which i we regularly buy right so those becomes commodity the location and organizational dimension which uh, country which uh, like kind of location then which district again depending upon how much data you are collecting right so this is how your data is stored right and there will be there are different type of visibility organization wise like i was telling uh, itc different uh, under itc there will be different divisions right each division wise how much spend is happening geography wise if i look into itc different states different territories different district how much supplier wise so each supplier wise how much purchase i am doing how much spend is happening then product wise different product wise let's say packing packaging products cigarettes fmcg how much product category wise spend is happening then time wise obviously time dimension has to be there each year how much expenses has happened and there will be different data sources where information will be stored right so this is your account tables which is a finance data basically supplier information their bank records how much you have paid how much penalty has happened uh, how much uh, payment is still pending then your general ledger it can be like uh, keep updating about your finances then master files it might be your supplier data it might be your product data then your contracts purchase orders right so these are all different databases different data files where data will be stored right think about in this way tomorrow if i give you 10 excel files with different information you should be in a position to collate them right put all those b look up h look up and consolidate into a single table and analyze that right but if data limit or the data size becomes big doing that in excel becomes difficult so there are different software as even you can do it in python r sas spss not in spss oracle sap so there are ready made software where all this information will be stored you can clean your data depending upon what your requirement right right now today i want to analyze uh, 10 suppliers where payment is pending right so i might have to drag this file master file and the account payables file right so those two sql query i'll put i'll drag those two files combine those two tables join those two tables and find out top 10 suppliers where payment is pending right so this is where your data analysis work happens then that from that data you can get uh, different reports right 
we will try to do that once you complete all this theoretical work so first step is obviously to extract extract from different databases like i showed there are finance data then order data then supplier relationship data supplier contact location all those details rationalize your suppliers get all all the suppliers pending link to a corporate parent so that is again big thing because account when i say account payable there will be thousand of accounts right so in itc itc in state odisha in under odisha there are 30 district each district wise there might be account randomly some number has been created consolidate they think them putting that okay i do not need a state uh, district wise data i need a state wise data so that whenever i am pulling that data out right downloading that data i should get a state wise expense so that is where i need to link them into a single kind of uh, item single cost account categorize supplier spend understand supplier base risk dependencies and socio economic breakdown right so each supplier wise from which location they are supplying what is their revenue size uh, their uh, investment profile right because sometimes what happens there might be some fraudulent activities they might be doing right so that is where all those information should be captured how many of them how many board members right all those information should be available in your supplier database then code for insert and access the details right so that is a big uh, part of if any of you get into this part uh, sourcing or procurement part kind of coding the data right because see uh, itc or uh, let's uh, i'm always taking the itc example let me take another example hul hul have 50000 skus 50000 different items which they are selling different locations different warehouses obviously in hul hul they have standardized but 10 years 15 years back that was not the situation so each warehouses might have the for the same product it might have a separate uh, terminology how they are storing that information so what happens when i am looking into the inventory that product might be available but because the naming the description is not standard it might not be so in my system right and that is a very big task companies spend lot of money only consolidating that because unless like it is a startup and from the beginning they have done that as the company grows new product get added and randomly some number some descriptions get attached here you might be searching for that component you might be searching for the vendor but somewhere that vendor name is let's say uh, sriram transport somewhere in other uh, location the uh, name is case transport right and this happens a lot vendor wise details your product wise details the descriptions are not coded right and that is somewhere companies right now in today's world unless they have not done companies like hl and png they have already done but other companies are struggling to do that if they have not already done Does your system captures good descriptions? Like I said, same transportation transporter is uh, taking care of your logistics across four states, but all the four states, four warehouses will be having a different name for the transporter. Somewhere it is Siram Transport, somewhere it is Ace Transport, somewhere it is only ST Transport, right? So you do not know whether I have four vendors or single vendor unless you go and look into the details description, then realize. this is only a single transporter see how much negotiating power you will have once i understand that rather than four transporter i have only one transporter now when i go and discuss with them i will say that on a year you are transporting 10000 tons 25000 tons you have to reduce your cost otherwise i will be thinking are four vendors there each of them are 5000 tons right so i do not have the buying power so that is somewhere this kind of consolidation happens identify and up, uncover strategic sourcing opportunities for immediate saving like i gave this example 
once i know that okay there are few vendors where i can have a strategic partnership right improve internal controls comply with government controls sometimes government will require because right now taxation has happened right? taxes and rules have changed so some product which was in different uh, sales tax or uh, your uh, octro and all those taxes and now everything has to move into your uh, goods and sales tax uh, premises right so you need to name you need to because category because in goods and sales tax your tax will be done on based on the category of the item right if you are putting in a wrong category or by mistake it is in the wrong category later on comment might file a tax complaint income tax department might file a tax complaint so these things need to be again streamlined right whether the they have been properly categorized or not then obviously the implementation process improvement it will be continued right any any questions on this anything any of you in case i i don't know some of your uh, classmates i think they joined in gp and all those things actual work uh, in a sourcing guy maximum work in this kind of data consolidation and uh, data cleaning will happen so obviously what kind of analysis you can do right overall analysis like i said category wise analysis top categories by spend which are the top 10 product categories where maximum spend is happening spend to supplier ratio by category right for different product categories how many suppliers are there pareto analysis by category 80 20 rule which are the 20 categories 20 products which are 80% is cost to my company supplier overlap by category same thing what we discussed four states four different uh, supplier name is there rather than having four different suppliers can i consolidate and have a single supplier name in the database then i can do a supplier wise same top suppliers by spend pareto analysis supplier overlap item wise also can do rather than category under fmcg category there can be for itc there will be 5 500 or 1000 items right under cigarette category there will be again different products right portfolio analysis product analysis then item analysis so same thing again mentioned here what is your total overall spend different type of analysis you can do right so when we talk about this supply uh, come back and after your presentation we discuss about supply chain dashboarding right so remember this part any anyway, i will be going to share this slide if i ask you to give create a this spend analysis right i will give you excel file and in excel i will ask you to create a dashboard so do not ask me then that what should be there in the dashboard so you can create a pivot chart or create a analysis showing total spend by each supplier total spend by category total spend by business unit total spend by each unit region then spend rank by supplier dependency right so this is a good way to create your dashboard so this like again if one uh, create different variations also but at least it should give you an idea right if somebody ask you to create a spend dashboard dashboard for spend analysis how to create a dashboard at least the top five part should be there right so supplier spend by different suppliers category business unit entity then rank click link them right spend rank by supplier dependence higher spend only two supplier so your dependence will be high right there is a spend of uh, monthly 10 crore or 20 crore there is only single supplier so your dependence on that supplier is very high so that will give you a hint that whether i should have a backup or not right so that's it about it any any last question so that i have put a uh, exercise for you or like i said uh, because up to now what we are discussing is the top uh, product top suppliers top uh, spend right then what about next 
what about those 20 percent is spent where there are maximum supplies are there right so that is something known as tail spend so i have attached three documents i think each of them has four or five pages uh, some graphs some visualization is there go through it whenever you have time on your own understanding what you understand by tail spend and different approaches of tail spend management maximum one page handwritten need to be uploaded by next i think wednesday or tuesday right complete that exercise and uh, give those uh, details to us with uh, give your uh, sector or industry details to us with, so that he can update that so yeah hello sir i missed my attendance Zero to so one. I missed my attendance, sir. Her roll number? Sir, two zero two zero two two one one. She tell. Two two one one. Okay. So zero Excuse to me, one. Zero to one. Yes, I have taken yours. Sir, three forty nine. Shweta, I missed my attendance. Three forty nine. Okay. So three forty two. Three forty two. Okay. Thank you, sir.